All right, now we're going to talk about um, the changes that were coming along in the United States in the middle of the 1800s. So after the War of 1812, the country was unified under the presidency of James Monroe. In the early 1800s, three distinct sections developed in the United States, the North, the South, and the West. In the early 1800s, the US Supreme Court backed the powers of the national government over the states in three important decisions. That means that the national government was supreme or over the states. And the Missouri Compromise allowed Maine to enter the Union as a free state and Missouri to enter as a slave state. It was important to maintain that balance. So one group did not feel like the other group had more power in the national government. The Louisiana Purchase doubled the size of the United States. Pre President Madison claimed Florida from the Mississippi to the Perdi Perdido River as part of the Louisiana Purchase. Spain ceded control of Florida to the United States in 1819. The Monroe, Monroe Doctrine was a clear warning to European nations to keep out of the Americas. Oops. Hold on, there we go. No, oh my goodness. Sorry guys, hold on. My computer is not cooperating with me right now. There we go. So this is the Missouri Compromise line. So everything in yellow that you see is a slave state. So that means that they own slaves. Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, Kentucky, Missouri, all the way down. So this territory was open to slavery of the Arkansas Territory by the Missouri Compromise. All of this was closed to slavery because of the Missouri Compromise. And all of the green, ooh, all of the green portion up here were free states. Between 1812 and 1819, the United States gradually acquired the land on the southern coast bordering the Gulf of Mexico from Baton Rouge to the entire area of Florida. So the second bank of the United States was established in 1816 with a 20-year charter. It was headquartered in Philadelphia and had offices in 29 major U.S. cities. A chartered bank provides people a place where they can easily deposit their money into various types of accounts and earn interest on their savings. Chartered banks maintain enough money so they can process customers' daily transactions. They also lend out the majority of their deposits to individuals and commercial borrowers in an effort to stimulate economic growth because the country's main goal is making money. So now let's watch a video that's about the growing sectionalism during this time period. Growing sectionalism in the 1820s splintered American unity. With different economies and opposing views on slavery, Northern and Southern leaders sharply disagreed on national issues. Missouri's admission to the Union sparked a heated debate over the regulation of slavery in the Western territories. Political leaders proposed the Missouri Compromise in 1820 to preserve the balance of power between free and slave states. The deal prohibited slavery in the unorganized territory of the Great Plains, but allowed Missouri to be admitted as a slave state. The presidential election of 1824 further exposed sectional differences within the Republican Party. Andrew Jackson of Tennessee won the popular vote but no candidate won a majority of the electoral votes. When the decision went before the House of Representatives, John Quincy Adams of Massachusetts was elected president. Jackson denounced the outcome as a corrupt bargain because House Speaker Henry Clay, who had also been a candidate, had given his support to Adams, who then appointed Clay Secretary of State. Jackson's supporters angrily protested. They believed that corrupt aristocrats of the East and robbed their man of the people. Jackson vowed to run again. 
The disputed election of 1824 led to the return of a two-party system. John Quincy Adams now led the National Republicans against the Democrats, a new party formed by Jackson supporters. In the election of 1828, Jackson triumphed over his old rival and became the seventh president of the United States. His ascendance from war hero to president ushered in the era of the common man, also known as the age of Jackson. So now what you're gonna do is you are going to go into the Canvas course, complete the reading essentials, answer the discussion question, take the quiz, and complete the Edgenuity module assigned for today.